Today we're going to make some grass. In the first part of the video I'm going to show you how to create a procedural grass texture and in the second part I'm going to show you how to model some grass and apply that texture to it. This is the texture we're going to create and the resulting grass looks like this. But your result might look like this or this or even this. That's the nice thing about proceduralism. It's customizable so you can change it around and make a very unique creation. This is the node setup. I'm going to start by setting up this grass texture and I'll do that on a plane. So I'm going to get rid of this cube and bring in a plane. I'm going to change the whole middle area to my shader editor and put that material that was on our cube onto our plane. Uh, then hit N to get rid of that shelf on the right. I'm going to change the top right to my 3D viewport, make it uh, slightly bigger, zoom in, hold down Z, move my mouse up to go into rendered mode. And I'm going to change over to cycles. We can do this in cycles or EV. Uh, but I'm just going to choose to do it in cycles. And then for the device, if you have GPU compute, select that, but it's not necessary. It just makes it go a little faster. I'm going to search for a texture coordinate node, and it comes up faster if you start typing coordinate rather than texture. And we're going to be coming out of UV this time. Uh, it's not a setting I normally use, but we're going to be doing something with UV mapping, so it makes a bit more sense to do it this way. And I'm going to lead it into a separate XYZ node and then into a map range node coming out of the X output there. I'm going to change the settings on the map range to stepped linear and I'm going to set the steps to five in total. So basically we have six sections going from black to white uh, with these solid gradients here. I'm going to use this to mask some stuff out but for now I'm just going to move it up there and I'm going to bring in a wave texture. This is going to be our main texture for these grass blades. So if you look at this, it's just a bunch of vertical lines. And uh, if we use this distortion value, we can create some interesting movement between those lines so they're not, not all straight up and down anymore. But I want to use that distortion uh, in a different way uh, by adding on a separate XYZ node first. So if you see if we use this distortion now, it kind of creates different lengths of bands. Um, you know, some are thick, some are thin, some are black, some are white, and some are in between. So I'm going to set this scale at 25. The distortion is going to be 8. And then I'm going to change the detail scale to 6. And if we zoom in, we can kind of see what's happening. It's just kind of interesting uh, variation to those vertical lines there. So I do want a bit of variation as well, the way that we were able to get with that distortion. Uh, but because I've got that separate XYZ node there, I can't get it with this wave texture anymore. So I'm going to do it a different way by bringing in a noise texture and just placing it right here. Then I'm going to bring in a mix RGB and place it right after that noise texture and run UV into color 2 as well. So now we have a controller that controls how much of this noise we have influencing it here. For the scale, I'm going to turn this up really high to 100 and then I'm going to change the distortion to 2. And then this mix right here, we're going to turn it way down because it's got too much of an effect there. It's going to go at 0.998 so it's barely in effect and it's a very small noise pattern we have running along there. I'd like to get a bit more variation in this pattern so I'm going to use a musgrave texture and just place it right here and this is going to come out of the color on that mix RGB into that vector there. So let's see what we're working with here. Uh, we've got some splotchiness so far. I'm going to adjust the scale so it's set at 8, the detail at 5, the uh, dimension at 0.1 and the lacunarity at 3. I'm going to look at the preview of this wave texture again and bring in a mix RGB, place it right here, uh, and it just goes into color 1 automatically. I'm going to use the height from the musgrave to go into color 2, and then we can move this back and forth to get uh, you know different levels of influence from both of these here. I'm going to put it at 0.2, so it's mostly going to be the wave texture and uh, you know a little bit of this musgrave. If we wanted to turn it up a bit more, we could. I just found you know, point 0.2 looks pretty good. Next up, we're going to bring in a color ramp and place it right after this mix RGB. And then we're going to duplicate it five times. So we have six color ramps in total with uh, control shift D. So it remains attached to that mix RGB. So there we go, six color ramps. And uh, we're going to make each one a different color. The way I did it originally was these top three were green and the bottom three were yellow. And then this one was brown, I guess, as well. Mostly brown, so yellow and brown for these bottom three. I'm going to split the screen down in the right-hand corner here 
and uh, just open up a new little section where I can open up an image editor. And then I've got a picture of grass that I got off the internet. And I'm going to use a color picking tool that you can use with the color ramps, where you hover over this area here, you hit E on your keyboard, then you get this eyedropper tool, and you can just drag this across. Um, I want the first section to be fairly dark green, so I kind of, you know, selected from those inner parts there. So let's do the second one here, and this one's going to be a little lighter. Maybe let's go like dark and light. So you can see the difference there. It's not much. It's very slight. Let's do the third one here. And this is going to be mostly light green. So there we go. I've got three different shades of green. Got another picture of some brown grass from the winter there. And so let's do the, the last three here. I'm going to make this kind of a lighter brown color here if I can. So there we go. Let's do this next one here. A little bit darker. Maybe half and half. And then this last one, let's make this like the darkest brown. The most dead areas might be too dark, but we can always lighten it if we want. Yeah, I'm going to make that a little bit less dark. That's kind of light now. Just do this as many times as you want until you're satisfied with the result. I tend to like less flags on here than more flags. Um, I guess this isn't too bad, but this is kind of a lot of flags. Uh, usually I like about eight flags across here. I find that looks pretty good. So now that we got that done, let's start mixing these together. Uh, we're just going to grab one. Well, that shortcut, by the way, was uh, Control, Shift, and right click and drag from one of these to the other. It just creates this mix RGB. And it's a Node Wrangler shortcut, so if it's not working, just enable Node Wrangler. And we're going to do that once here, and once here, once here, once here and once here. So just for all of those mixes, I just keep kind of going, going down the line there. Then I'm just going to order them so they're all in uh, a row here. So right now they're all mixing together. That's not really what I want. I'm going to come out of this map range and bring in a math node. Let's change this to greater than. And this first one is going to be set at 0.1. You can see as I lower it or raise it, the bar slowly goes across to the right, so it uh, you know is slowly overtaken with black from white there. So if you set this at 0.1, it's basically going to mask out, you know, just the very left area is going to be this green, and everything else is still going to be a mix there. So let's check it out there. I guess we can't really tell yet. So um, there's the first mask, anyways. I'm just going to duplicate this greater than while leaving it attached. We'll change this to 0.3. This is going to mask out the next one. So now we've got two masks there. Let's keep going. This is going to be 0.5. And this is going to mask out the next one there. The next one is going to be 0.7. And that's going to mask out the fourth mix RGB. And the last one is going to be set to 0.9. And that's going to mask out this last one here. So if you did it correctly, you should have six different sections here that you can then control with these color ramps. Let's grab this principled BSDF, place it here, and we can just view this. Um, I'm also going to bring in a translucent node, place it down here, run this color into the color here, and let's just go, actually don't do that, uh, just bring in an add shader and just place it right after there. And there we go. We have a really simple, you know, organic leaf grass texture setup. We could also use this output here to kind of create a very quick bump map or roughness. Let's do a bump and let's just feed it um, into the height here. And then this is going to go into the normal. Let's dial that back a little bit. Let's put this to maybe 0.2, something like that. You can always adjust it, but this goes a long way. Next, I'd like to create some areas where we can kind of mask out some transparency uh, kind of where the grass is broken or frayed. So I'm going to come out of the UV once again, and let's use a noise texture. I'm going to place it right here. I brought in a white noise texture accidentally. Let's just put it right here. So run it into the vector there, and we're going to put a mapping node right in front of it here. Then I'm going to bring in a mix RGB, place it right here. We're going to come out of the color into color one. And then I want to create a point right here before the mapping node and run this into color two. 
Let's take a look at what we're creating so far. Then I'm going to run this into a separate XYZ node. And we'll come out of the Y into a map range node. Somebody was commenting that I use probably too many color ramps. I think they're right. I'm trying to use more map range nodes. But if you feel like you want to use a color ramp, I think you should. Just realize that uh, it's going to slow things down a little bit when you start adding more and more and more and your scene gets quite heavy. I'm going to change the X value under scale on this mapping node so we get kind of a stretched effect. And if we bring this min up a little bit, we can kind of see, um, you know, it's creating a black mask at the bottom there. I'm going to set this at 0.6 and the uh, max, I'm going to set at 0.61, the from max at 0.61. Now we can kind of see this vertical noise texture showing up here. And I'm going to adjust this noise texture here, uh, set the scale to 10. The detail is going to be at 6, and the roughness, I'm going to put at 0.7. You get a little bit more bleeding into each other there. And then for this mix here, uh, I had it set at 0.77. You can do whatever you want, but I like the look at this here for a frayed grass texture. I'm going to quickly set up a value node that we can use to control uh, the amount of fraying here. And I'm going to plug this into the from min. I'll set this at 0.6 here, and then I'm going to add in a math node that's just going to add 0.01 to, uh, you know, whatever we have right here and put it into this right here. So now if we control this, it uh, controls both the from min and from max uh, just in sync there. It's kind of nice. I'll set this back at 0.6. So to control what is being frayed here, I'm going to grab this greater than node from the top that's set uh, with a threshold of 0.9 and control shift D it so it remains attached to this map range node that I've got the you know stepped linear settings there. And I'm going to bring this down here because I'd like to uh, bring in another math node and multiply these values together. So if I set this to multiply, I can bring this in here. And now we have this tiny area that's white while the rest is black. So I'll just clean this up slightly, maybe move that over here, move that up here, just so we can see what's going on slightly easier there. So now that we have this masked out, we can use this to create some transparency. So I'm going to bring in a transparent shader here. And let's mix these together. Again, that control shift, uh, right click and drag shortcut. Uh, that's how it works. So control shift, right click and drag from one node to the other here. Creates this nice mix here. And I'm going to use this uh, information as the factor. We can see when we do that, we create some transparency. So if we have a blade of grass here, uh, we can put the whole blade of grass here, and it's just kind of going to fray at some point there. I wasn't quite content with this. I wanted a little bit more control over how this fray works, and to kind of have a random uh, amount of fray on each of these strands if I wanted. So uh, to do that, I'm going to grab a point along here and just create a reroute, and I'm going to bring in a white noise texture and place it right here. We can see when we do that, it gives us a random value for each one of these stripes that we had for coming from our uh, step linear map range node up here. We can then use this information uh, to subtract this information from it. Uh, I'll show you what I mean because that was kind of confusing. I'm just going to grab another math node, set it to subtract, and I'll place it right here. And I'm just going to make a reroute here because I want to feed this value into that bottom one on the subtract. And then the output of the subtract is going to go to this reroute right here. So if we look at what's happening here on the end product, um, you know, it doesn't look like much because I still got my greater than set to 0.9. But if I bring this back, we can see uh, now it's kind of cut off everywhere there. We can adjust this, and this will adjust, you know, how much each one, um, you know, is uh, translated. So it's just like a plus or minus kind of function right here. Right now, I don't really like the range here. I kind of like them to be closer to each other. So I'm going to duplicate this subtract, place it right here, and change this to multiply. And then if I change this to 0.3, we can see that they're much closer to each other. And I can move this back and forth, get it to a height I want. And if I want less of these masks, I can just bring this across. And, you know, maybe we just mask out the dead grass. That makes sense. You know, the green grass is doing better. The stalks aren't really in trouble there. Another thing you could consider doing to is changing this white noise texture to 4D. And then you have this W value that you can then click through and get different seed values here. So, you know, if you wanted to drag this back down to, what was it, uh, I guess it was a little lower, negative 0.1. Then you just drag this uh, W value through 
and you get all these seats, and you can control the magnitude with this. Um, so, uh, you know, play around with this. I'm just going to go back to 3D for now here, and uh, just drag this back up, uh, and I'll just go forward from here. Once you're happy with this texture and you've set it up exactly how you want, you can move on to the next step, and also you can change this whenever you want to. But uh, let's do that next step. I'm going to rearrange my window layout, close that area, open up another area here. I'm going to make another 3D viewport and move my grass texture and this light over a little bit, maybe something like this. And then I'm just going to recenter on the uh, grass texture there so I can see what's going on. I'm going to split this as well and open up a UV editor in the top left. I'm going to bring in another plane with Shift A, select plane, hit R, X, 90 to rotate it along the X axis by 90 degrees, hit Control A and apply that scale. Hit G, Z, and hold down control and move your mouse up just so it snaps to the grid there, just because I want to be uh, just kind of standing on that red line. And then hit one on your number pad to look at it straight on. I'm going to tab into edit mode and just size it along the S X axis with S and X, and then uh, just make it skinny, something like this. Then we'll hit control R, make two loop cuts with the mouse wheel, and just right click so they remain in their starting position. While looking at it straight on, hit A to select everything, and then hit U and project from view. Now we can see our UVs are in the top left hand corner. I'm going to hit A while over here. And so we got everything selected. I'm just going to size it up so it's about the height of the UV tile there. Then let's add our grass material on there. I haven't renamed it yet, so it's still called material. Let's call this grass texture. You can see because I've got it in the center of the UV tile there, it's actually got, you know, half of this green and half of this, uh, you know, frayed part, the, the brown part there. So we can move it back and forth if we want or whatever, but uh, we don't even have to worry about that just yet. Uh, let's just move it to the left for now. And so it's in the green area. I'm going to bring in another light as well. Uh, it's gotten kind of dark over here. So let's just bring in something temporary like this. And uh, I'll just turn this up to 100. Is that what the other light set at? Oh, 1,000. Let's turn it up to 1,000. There you go. That's a bit better. I'm going to go into solid mode and then tab into edit mode. Grab these top two vertices and just scale them closer together with S. These bottom two as well. Uh, these two as well. Maybe, you know, it doesn't really matter too much. And then let's view this from the side with three on your number pad. Just make sure it's centered. And I'm going to grab these top two ones here. Oops. I want to make sure we're in wireframe when we do that so we grab everything. And I'm just going to kind of model a very rough piece of grass here. Just something like this looks pretty good. We can kind of see uh, what we're working with there. I'm going to come into these two vertices and just scale them down a little bit. Uh, if you don't like the way that this is mapping, you can always change it if you want, but I'm fine with this for now. I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier on here, and I'll just leave it at 1 for now. Then let's enable shoot smooth shading with either W or right click uh, to bring up that context menu. This next part is a neat trick I learned from watching a video. Let's tab into edit mode, select everything, and we're going to want to also enable the 3D cursor as the transform, transform pivot point so that everything transforms around this 3D cursor. You can see if I do that and I rotate, it's all around that point there. So I've got it, uh, everything selected, transform around this 3D cursor, and I'm going to hit Shift D, R, Z, 45, Enter. So if you do that correctly, that was all one step. And you can hit Shift R, and it uh, repeats that last step. So if you do that six more times, then you've got eight blades of grass here. At this point, I would recommend saving this as a backup, uh, just as a template. Just so you can always come back to this if you make a mistake and you want to restart. So I'm going to do that by just hitting M and creating a new layer, just calling it Backups. And um, I'll move it there. And then I'm going to duplicate it, I guess, uh, because I forgot to do that initially. And just move the new one back to the regular scene collection. And then if I go like this here, bring up my outliner, I'm just going to move it uh, just so this, um, no, the backups is not uh, visible there. There we go. And now I can start making some changes. You can uh, tab into edit mode and hover over one of these blades of grass, hit L, and it will select the entire thing. And now you could use your UV map in the top left to move it across. Uh, let's say we want one blade of grass that's, you know, damaged, or maybe we want a lighter green one. The trick is 
uh, a little hard at first because you know this is divided into four areas and then eight areas where this is divided into six areas. So unfortunately, um, it's not easy to get that image up here. Uh, but what you can do is just kind of eyeball it and just have this as a reference image. And you can kind of see when you're at the border between two of these as well, which might actually be what you want to do sometimes. But I'm going to leave this on green for now. Uh, all of these are going to be alive and uh, no frayed edges. You could also grab a couple of these strands here by hitting L a couple times and maybe shift D all of these and R Z to rotate them around. For some reason, my 3D cursor is over there. Uh, so put it back and you can rotate around and maybe rotate this way. You can even use shift W, which is kind of a weird tool. That is the bend tool. You're going to want to move your 3D cursor somewhere because it, uh, you know, the way it acts depends on where that 3D cursor is. You can also come to a single edge here and hit control B and that creates a bevel and then grab both of these edges here and control B one more time. You're going to want to fine tune this here. Uh, this is just basically creating a little bump there. So you can grab this face, maybe move it slightly up or, you know, whatever. Maybe grab this edge down here and slide it along here and this one as well. Um, it's kind of up to you. Another thing we could do is use proportional editing. So I'm going to grab this here, tab into edit mode and either hit O or come up and click this icon at the top of the screen. And I'm going to grab a single vertex and just move it up and down. And we have this sphere of influence that we can make larger or smaller with your mouse wheel. Um, yeah, we can also come up here and check this box that says connected only. And now it'll only affect that one blade of grass, which is kind of nice. We can also select a few at once if we wanted um, a few vertices and move all those up. Let's change one or two of these over to that. Um, frayed look as well just to give it a bit more interest you know why not we could also make it really frayed by just moving this up um, in the viewport there we can see it's kind of nice you know normally an image texture would repeat but because this is procedural we haven't rendered this out yet we can basically move this up and down as much as we want. We can get a little tiny fringe or basically the whole thing is going to be withered away in this instance. So I've gone ahead and modeled three green grass versions and three brown grass versions. And I'm going to grab these three green grass versions, hit M and create a new collection. I'm going to call this green grass so I can apply it to, uh, you know, if it's going to use geometry nodes or a particle system, it doesn't really matter, but it's useful to have it in this collection here. And then I'm going to do the same thing to these brown grasses. Again, select all those and just hit M and let's create brown grass or yellow grass, whatever you want to call it, just so you can identify it. Let's just quickly talk about a particle system. A lot of people are using geometry nodes, uh, but I think a particle system is going to be a little quicker just to get some results really quick. You could use geometry nodes too, though. So I'm just going to bring in a plane. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the adjustments uh, or the dimensions or anything like that just yet. And I'm going to click on a particle system which is right here. And let's just click this plus button here, change it to hair, change it to advanced, and let's click rotation and go down to render. We're going to select collection. And then you can select either your green grass or your brown grass. I can do the green grass. You can see it's already doing something, but everything is pretty uniform. So to break that up, I think one of the most important things is just to come to the rotation and do something like global Z and drag this, um, where is it? Uh, the randomize rotation over. Uh, you might not want to go too far. Maybe 0.4 something is fine. You know, the phase, randomize phase, that works great. And then make sure you do some scale adjustments, find the right scale, and then randomize the scale. Oops, I wanted to go back a bit more. And then randomize the scale. Uh, this is going to make a huge difference as well. You can turn it all the way up. Won't be too bad. And uh, there we go. We got something really quick that already looks pretty good. Um, you know, I would add a bit more grass in here, maybe change the scale, maybe add some other colors. It's up to you. I guess one more thing that's uh, quite helpful is if you come down to um, the, where is it, uh, the textures, you can add, I'm just going to get rid of this bottom window. Oh, good, create a new one. Yeah, that's perfect. So I've got a just a list of blank areas here. I'm going to hit new, and then if you click here, it'll take you to the textures panel. And uh, I'm going to change this into a clouds texture, which is just a noise texture. 
And I'm going to do this really quickly. You can spend a while on this, but uh, I'm going to come to colors and to color ramp because I'm going to clamp a little bit. And this is going to influence my density. So if I drag these across, it'll be a more extreme influence there. Oops. And then I can change the size of the scale. Let's bring it up a little bit. So basically it's, uh, you know, in the black parts and the white parts, it's either uh, displaying the grass or masking it out, which is kind of nice. Gives a little variation, uh, you know, a lot more visual interest really quickly with this method. So after playing around with this texture for a bit, I learned two things. First of all, the more transparency you have in your grass texture, the longer it'll take to render. And the second thing, is if you decide to bake this out, it'll cut your render time in half. So let's talk about how to do that. Let's start by setting up the camera. So I'm just gonna grab the camera here and I'm gonna make the resolution 1080 by 1080. I'm gonna make sure it's on PNG and then RGBA, uh, that A is alpha. Then go to the render properties and let's set up uh, under where it says film, just click on there and make sure this transparent box is clicked. And now let's bring in an emission shader. It's going to place that just above these uh, principal BSDF. I'm going to run this last mix RGB from this line into that emission shader. I'm going to run this all the way to this last mix RG or mix shader, pardon me. So uh, now we've got this set up here. Um, if this is properly zoomed in with the camera, just make sure you know you don't have those edges there. Um, you can hit F12 and render this out and just save it as a PNG. Let's also render the bump map. So I'm going to get the preview from this mix RGB right before all these color ramps. And uh, with the same camera settings, I'm just going to hit F12, render it out, and save it as PNG. Once you've done that, uh, you can just find a folder where your files are. And uh, I've got that set up here, so I'm just going to drag that in here. This is my grass PNG. So if you view this, this is what it looks like. And if you look at the alpha, it looks like this here. So that's basically a mask for you there. So let's look at the color there. And I'm also going to drag in this uh, bump map that I've got as well. So I'm going to bring in a principal BSDF, plug this color into the color, and this alpha is going to go into the alpha right here. And then this bump map, let's feed this into a bump node into the height. And then let's plug this into the normal. And I'll set this at point 0.2. That was our uh, settings before. Let's view this, and uh, it should be the same settings as before. It looks pretty close to me. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. So, you know, this would cut the render time in half. It's worth doing if you like the look of this texture here. Okay, that's it for today. I did go over stuff fairly quickly at the end, so if you're confused about something, just let me know, and I'll explain it. Some of that ending was my own quick way of doing things, too. So let me know if you have a suggestion for things that could be done more efficiently. I'd be kind of curious. Anyways, take care. Thanks for watching.